You have one unheard message. Hi, I was calling Current, the influencer marketing platform, but I think I just got redirected to a bunch of people listening to a podcast. Well, anyways, I was calling Current because I was told they could help get my brand set up on TikTok Shop and even build out an affiliate program of content creators promoting my brand and even have those content creators go on live streams and promote my product there. Wow, <laughs> I could really use Current. <laughs> I also heard that the brands they work with are making millions in sales. I guess I'll just go to their website at current.tech. What's the easiest choice you can make? Window instead of middle seat? Picking a vendor who sends a great gift basket? Outsourcing business tasks you hate? What about selling with Shopify? Whether you're selling a little or a lot, Shopify helps you do your thing, however you cha-ching. Shopify is the global commerce platform that helps you sell at every stage of your business. From the launch your online shop stage to the first real-life store stage, all the way to the did we just hit a million orders stage? Shopify is there to help you grow. Whether you're selling scented soap or offering outdoor outfits, Shopify helps you sell. Wherever and whatever you're selling, Shopify's got you covered. Sign up for a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash try. Go to shopify.com slash try now to grow your business, no matter what stage you're in. Shopify.com slash try. This is a podcast from Minute Media. Hashtag no music, no intro. We are thrilled to have the newly paid, fresh off his <laughs> contract extension with NFL Network, Greg Rosenthal, 60% G himself, again joining the hashtag Saints Twitter podcast. All jokes aside, man, and, and <laughs> I, I, I hit you up through text message. I hit you up on the Instagram post that you put. Uh, much appreciated um, and deserved. Um, and Ryan and I couldn't be happier for you. Um, for you, Mark, all, all the crew, you guys absolutely deserve it. So big ups for y'all for, for securing the bag. Um, well deserved. I appreciate that. It, it was a, it was a journey at the NFL, getting them to uh, getting them to believe or see, see that the podcast could be a, a valuable thing. It took uh, it took threatening to leave to make it happen, but I guess that's how that's how business works. Unfortunately, you like that's negotiations. You say, yeah, that's how it goes. Uh, unfortunately, I'm not like the newly paid. You know, this I'm not Aaron Donald. I'm not getting some big signing bonus. <laughs> a- actually, the way it works is the old deal ran out. Um, and they're going to take, they'll, they'll probably like take a couple weeks to get it going and get their paperwork. working. So I'm, I'm not getting any money right now. <laughs> what? How does that fucking work? <laughs> wow. I don't know why I'm sh- sharing these particulars, but that's, that's probably, no, that's, I mean, that's good. That's good inside of shit. <laughs> well, it's like, it's like any, uh, man. I don't know. I think a lot of at least some corporations are like that. It's just that they'll they'll make it up. They'll get it back. But yeah, there's no signing bonus. That's for sure. I mean, just just for Ryan and I, we've been fans of the of the show on the pod in its infancy. And I guess the combination of that is you, me, Ryan and, and Mark Susser having like a lunch together in Vegas at the draft is pretty much the definition of, of full circle in regards to um, how funny and weird life can be sometimes. But absolutely. Um, I know that it's, it's funny because Ryan, after we had still best wolf I've ever had in my life, shout out to Yardbird in Vegas. Uh, Ryan texted me after we had lunch, you know, a couple of days after we had, you know, he went back to Alabama, I went back to California and he was like, we had, we had lunch with like Greg and Mark. Like, <laughs> it's, it's, it's cool. It, it's cool. It's cool. Um, well, Ryan was the, the start, you know, the key to the whole thing. You're, you're old news, Adam. Like, Oh yeah. I've always been Mark and I getting to meet Ryan in person was, was a treat. <laughs> yes. And I like it. Cause now you guys can't complain about, um, 
any officiating or anything the NFL does because Roger Goodell paid for the lunch. Not sure that how that works. He would have to pay for the lunch for the entire city of New Orleans for the meds to be fully made. Uh, but, we, but we appreciate you, Raj, even though you might have a couple of depositions you might have um, next week. Uh, Shout out, before, we, before we get into your projected starter series, a series that we love that you do, you've been doing it for a while now, some of the best work that you do. Um, I also wanted to give you kudos and credit in regards to the whole your reporting specifically of the Deshaun Watson thing um, when that was all happening in March and, and you were Ryan and I was, but obviously we have a small podcast. We don't have the type of voice that, that you have for you to have a voice in, in how you utilize it when all those negotiations were going down and just how gross it felt. Um, I know I was completely away, ready to get, you know, just stop my fandom com- completely and now there's there have been more trickles out. There's a 23rd victim. There's a 24th victim. He's still not suspended by the league yet, but you were one of the few who worked for the league and still had your name on it. And so I wanted to commend you, commend you for that because not enough people did it, and and you were one of the few to do it, and you and you did it loudly, and that that took a lot of balls. I mean, it, it does it, but it, it does at the same time because at the end of the job end of the day, like that's your job and your career. Um, so I want to give you that kudos at the, at the start of this podcast. Cause it seems like as every day turns, there's more, I mean, I used to call him Mr. 22. Now I should call him Mr. 24 news floating around in regards to Deshaun Watson. Well, that's the crazy thing is it, it you're talking about it. Like it's a past tense, but this is very uh, present tense. You know, we talked about it on, on around the NFL today and, um, mm-hmm. uh, I've talked about it with some other people in the media the last few months, just how man, man um, it's dropped off the radar. And, and I get that because there haven't been new developments about it. And it's just sort of like waiting to see what's happening uh, next. But the reason I want to talk about it so much is because it, it does hit on something. I do think I do know because I'm not doing reporting on this. I'm just talking about what's happening. Um, but what I do know is, how the media game works and to see how um, I think the agent specifically had not bought silence, but essentially, er, you know, worked his work silence out of the major media companies covering Deshaun Watson and how that directly impacted him getting paid. And I thought about it this week with um, Rusty Harden, his lawyer really stepping in it. And, and I, I think, you know, not doing very well for his client with some of the things that he said and, and everything. Mm. And I, and I'm just thinking about that. There's these people around Deshaun Watson and look, it's, it's, it's all Deshaun Watson's fault and he, he bears all the blame here and he won't take responsibility for it. But the people around him that are milking him for money, number one, Rusty Harden and number two is agent David Mulligetta who helped push this trade through to maximize that contract that he got. It's like, they're not really working in Deshaun Watson's best, interest either because this could have all been over in october um they could have uh agreed to a settlement back then they could have not pushed this all through and have it land on the browns but they were worried about their money and and that's what their concern is and they really he he needs to think about like the people around him aren't really uh serving his best interest either not that i give not that I care about that, but it's just right, an, right. An, inter- an interesting part of this whole thing because their their lawyer, his lawyer, is just making it worse. Because I saw where, um, I don't know if it's true or not, but it was reported that uh, they, each one was offered like 100K, but they had to sign like this NDA where they couldn't talk about it and something like that, which I guess is kind of typical in settlements like that, but you know, they they thought the NDA was too um, uh, too aggressive, apparently. So they refused the uh, you know the hundred k. So that right there just told me that you know, is he really serious about getting rid of this? Like, because if I was him, I'm, thankfully I'm not him, but I'm just saying if I was him, I would be trying to get rid of this shit like ASAP. You just signed two hundred thirty million guarantee. You got money. You're good. The rest of your life, your kids good for the rest of your life. Your kids, kids good. 
get this shit out the way. So the, just the fact that, you know, he is, he wants to settle, but at the same time, it's like, he, like you said, he's taking some bad advice. But other than that, man, it's just nasty. Like, just from the Browns' point of view, I'm just so happy the Saints to do it. I know Adam, like, Adam's still pissed at the Saints. I am. I do carry, like, a little nastiness, like a little na- nasty vibe with them, but I'm just thankful it didn't happen, man, because I, I, couldn't, I couldn't support the team. Like, I couldn't support, support the Saints anymore if they did that shit. I couldn't do it. Right, and then you not, have this black cloud just hanging over. Ugh. Right, it's because it's not ending. Like, right. I, I actually think this last week um, could be very meaningful because of the timing. A, the media is, you know, starting to pop up more. Like, it, it, it Monday was a big, a um, lot of stories about it. It's been back in the national spotlight. And then B, we're right at the time when the NFL is making their decisions. And what we've learned about the NFL in terms of making their suspensions decisions it's it's very much uh about pr and in wanting to look like they're doing the right thing and and avoid public criticism and i think all this happening right as they're making the the, the suspension decision could really make that suspension even longer and and so much of it is self-inflicted harm like these these two latest uh plaintiffs the, the latest one literally mentions um, Deshaun Watson's lawyer's comments that he made uh, on a radio station on Seth Payne show last week where that he just didn't need to make where he he said it's not he, he said it's not a crime to make someone uncomfortable or yeah. in in that that quote especially I think is going to stand out um, you know he yeah. also said it wasn't a crime <laughs> to have a happy ending as long as no one was paying for it but oh he wasn't talking about Deshaun Watson and and all this stuff like the settlements that pro football talk did a good job reporting it um, like they revealed more details about how that all went down that, that basically at the time it was Deshaun Watson's choice to not do that in part. Cause he didn't want um, he, he wanted to be able to talk about it. <laughs> like <laughs> he, he has never, he has never gotten off the point. He did not want the public to think that he was saying yeah. he was guilty, essentially. Right. He, so he, until he, he has, type. right. Until yeah. he has some level of contrition, uh, you know, I, I keep saying this, but if, if he had just said back then or anytime at this point of the process, thank you that, My that um, what he did was wrong or that he didn't understand what he did was wrong and he wants to learn from it and he paid them their money, everyone would have forgiven him and we wouldn't be talking about it. all the all the people that don't want to talk about it because they're covering for Watson. They wouldn't be talking about it, and neither would the people like me who are talking about it. Like if we would have all moved on. I yeah. think that we Ryan and I had our, our two biggest episodes were the Deshaun Watson episodes, ironically, ironically enough. And it's just one of those things where I made the analogy and maybe because I, I, I deal with, you know, similar people in in my career as being a social worker but like there's a very like sociopathic type of behavior in wanting to have the power to control the narrative and get away get one get away with it which he, he is two get rewarded for it and it's this whole power control dynamic that he refuses to relinqu- mm. relinquish the the grip on, which makes it even so much so much more disgusting. And I was talking to a friend earlier. I said, right now they're at they're at twenty four victims. Like I'm sure that number's probably ten to fifteen, maybe double that that people haven't just come forward yet. And that's where the whole thing of it being so gross was because. And people were getting on us like, oh, my God, Jameis Winston, you know, he wasn't a perfect saint and all this. And like Ryan and I had to push back on that. Said we one, we, we've talked about Jameis's transgressions Two, at some point he did show contrition in terms of what he did. Right. Does it make it right at the end of the day? No. But that's completely different than someone who is steadfast and saying they didn't do anything wrong. Like that's a whole nother type of sociopathic type of ser- serial like behavior that's just appalling and uh, anyway we we it's it's gross we've talked about it long enough i will ask you though you you said that this time period 
and I know this is not saying that you know anything or hear anything. What do you think would be the amount of games that he'll be suspended? Just just as a complete educated guess. No, I don't even have one. These things are impossible because it's been all over the place. Yeah. I, you know, just he, like, talking to people who would have guesses, man, it's been all over the place. At one point, a couple months ago, it felt like maybe this is going to be really on the low end of things. Now, yeah. as I'm sitting here, I'm hopeful because I hope he's getting more that it's going to be on the high end of things. You know, that you look at their primetime games. They only have two of them. Um, they're both in the first half of the season. The second one is week eight. It's right before a bye week. I mean, if you wanted to be a conspiracy theory, that's a clean eight games right there. That's a spot. Um, but now I think there's a chance it, it could be longer. Like uh, than that, I, I just, there's, there's no way. I don't know if there, there's going to be a right answer. The, the only thing I'd slightly push back on everything you say, and, and you're right, he, he got this money and it's sickening how everything happened and it's sickening, you know, I, I think how the media helped and there's so many parts of this that are terrible, but he, he's not getting away with it, man. Um, like, I don't think he I think they realized it a little bit with the press conference that like, oh, this isn't going to go how we thought it was going to go exactly. And I I don't think that's going to change um, barring at any level of contrition from him. Um, like he he's in some darkness and I don't think that like I don't think that's going to go away. This is going to change. You know, this has obviously changed his life. Um, yep. And the way that fans and people see him and the way that he's going to do his job as like an NFL quarterback for the rest of his life. So in, in yeah, he's getting his money, but I, I he's also paying, he's going to be paying for the, some of the decisions that he made. Um, not, yeah. not the way we would want, but he, he'll be paying. Yeah. Rich Eisen went in on him today too. So, I mean, I don't know how much power Rich Eisen oh, got, but he I has a voice, you that. know, I missed that. Uh, he, he went in, like he basically called on the league, like y'all got to get this guy out of here. Ooh. Yep. And so I mean, you know, like we'll see. <laughs> like it's, it, I mean, and it's impacting, as you said, if you were a, a Browns fan, um, it, it's just gonna have, it's gonna change the whole tenor and everything about that job for Kevin Stefanski and the general managers and everything. It's like I was, I was looking at these, these like analytic lists. PFF made like their top five front offices or whatever. And they put like the Browns, you know, they put the Browns at like number three. And I was like, I was like, I just don't think people are sort of getting their head around. Like it's going to change their lives too. like the whole, like, you know, the Browns, like smart, analytical, you know, Andrew Barry, like money ball. It's like, now nah, you don't get to be those guys anymore. No, and, absolutely and, not. And, and there's this sort of assumption that this is all going to work out well from a football side of it. It's like, we'll see. Like, yeah. I think there's a pretty realistic possibility that that doesn't exactly work out how you think it's going to be. And it ruins a lot of career. So it, it, that's at least a possibility out there. A lot depends on what happens on the field. But as we know, like that, that is unpredictable. Speaking of the football side of things, um, let, let's get into your your work. Uh, you did stellar work in terms of the projected starter series where you as Adam, as namely put, you project the starters after free agencies happen, after the draft has happened for each team in the NFL. Uh, so obviously this is the Saints podcast. Let's start with the Saints. So when you did this activity and exercise for the Saints, what are some things that stood out to you positively and potentially some things that stood out to you negatively of how the team stands right now as it's currently constructed? Well, just like big picture, because I've been blabbing on too long. I, I get long winded when I talk to Sean Watson. I got to watch out. Uh, my big picture thing with them was like, man, I kind of you kind of forget that the Saints roster is so good. And I know Saints fans have been feeling that. Like, why is everyone just assume we're going to like go in the dirt when actually we'll have, you know, in theory, we'll have a quarterback this year. Yeah, we lost Sean Payton, but these moves that they made to win now. And, and that's, that's somewhat what they've done, you know, bringing in Jarvis Landry and, and Tyron Matthew to fill out this roster on top of everything else they did. Like, man, it, it's a good roster. <laughs> like the, like the huge, the huge questions that you have, you got like left tackle and you got your quarterback question, but like, this is still one of, you know, one of the 10 best rosters in the NFL period. 
No, no, it's it, it is interesting, and but you, you did say quarterback, so it's like there's always that ooh, like that's a big, that's a big, you know, question mark when you talk about quarterback, and the caveat of Sean Payton not being here, which is like I, I it's hard to analyze, but you know, everyone considers Sean Payton. I mean, I don't know how great you want to consider him top three, top five, but he was a great head coach. Um, you know, Saints fans been digging at him since he left, which I understand. But <laughs> at the end of the day, <laughs> we know he's a top five. So that has to cause something. So that's the big question for me is Pete Carmichael. Can Pete Carmichael cook? Can he take this offense? He has weapons. Um, he has a quarterback with a good arm that can put up numbers. Can he really coach, you know, because right. we don't know. It's just a question. We don't know. He hasn't been allowed to, you know, he's been Sean Payton's just kind of right-hand guy, but Sean Payton, you know, you know, Sean Payton, like he's a big dog. He, when he walks in a room, everyone knows it. He has that personality. Pete Carmichael just does not, he's not that guy. And the crazy thing is he didn't even want this job. Like he didn't want it. <laughs> they had to I know. Is him. he going to, is he going to make it to week one? That's what, I don't know. It could be Doug Marone. Like I don't know. <laughs> he he might he might be one of those veterans that gets the training camp, and after a few days, he's like, this isn't it for me. This is too much. It would, it would it would not be crazy to be if we had Doug Marone got the place. I was gonna say who's the next dude up? It's Doug Marone, right? I guess. Yeah. So yeah. Um, probably, yeah. Okay, so I, I hear you on Winston, and, I, and I'd be all for like going through the roster, kind of what my notes were w- with them uh, piece by piece. But with Wint, you know, with Winston, I, I think, you know, from an outside point of view, you know, he wasn't as good as the numbers said last year, but he was solid. Yeah. Um, and the fact that you have him, you know, off the ACL, which is a little bit of a concern because that can affect accuracy. That can affect your footwork. You know, it's not just about like, oh, are you a scrambling quarterback or not like that? That can mess you up. But the fact that it's Winston and Andy Dalton to me just. Mm-hmm you know, you have sort of the Steelers argument this year, which is like, yeah, we're, we might be starting a rookie or Mitch Trubisky at first, but aren't they going to be better than last year's Ben Roethlisberger? And I think, <laughs> you know, I think the Saints got to feel the same way that like, isn't this combination of Winston and Dalton uh, going to be better than those Trubisky nine games that they're starting to taste them? Yeah. 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 No, Ryan and I have talked about like that. They won games with though, that they won a lot of games with. Yeah, they did. Um, we, we talked about how just getting Andy Dalton in the room, it one, it shows that the team has no faith in Ian book, which just shows that, you know, that's just potentially a wasted fourth round pick, but that at least the team sees themselves as being able to contend. And if Winston gets injured, or he misses a game, they at least feel comfortable that Andy Dalton would be, okay to step in the role for a couple of uh, start or two and maybe can go one and one. And I oh, he's going to be playing for you guys, man. I don't know how. I hope it's not because of injury. Oh, my God. I hope it's not because because <laughs> Jameis is done. The red but, rifle returns? I'm just saying, like, whatever the over-under on Andy Dalton starts is, I'm taking the over. Um, just because something will happen with Jameis, whether it's injury, whether he's slumping. Or, I, I, I don't even know. Um, that will be a great couple million dollars spent. I mean, he's not making any money, Andy Dalton, and I'm not saying he's going to be great, but he'll. It's nice to have him there, and like, there's not. I want Jameis Winston to play and be great, but there's probably like the difference between Jameis Winston and Andy Dalton is probably, you know, the difference between like the 18th best quarterback in the league and like the 26th. You know, we're not talking or 23rd. It's it's not going to be some crazy thing. All I'll say is that if Jameis is in a slump and gets benched or something for Andy Dalton and Jameis is completely healthy and like Kenny Pickett is doing moderately decent or to or like good for the Steelers that that's a whole like that that's bad for the Saints in terms of just I mean I get a lot of teams pass on Kenny Pickett but that would not be um, a good look. Maybe it's just because I'm thinking about the Saints it's like Teddy was starting a bunch of games you know, uh, Taysom was starting. You guys have just had quarterbacks yeah, coming in yeah. and out. So you got to you got to kind of assume that your backup's going to play a role or be yeah. ready for that. And the whole idea is, though, that, you know, that and that's, you know, going through the roster, like 
Not that it takes a genius to go through the roster and be like, oh, it's nice that Marcus Callaway just went from our number one to our number four. Yeah. That's pretty. That's a pretty big deal. <laughs> like, first of all, Huge. he's a great he's a great number four, assuming he is four. Um, but I, I, I think I was on the same page as you guys that I thought Olave was the most pro ready receiver. And I think yes. he's going to step in and be a factor. I think Landry is going to be you know, as long as he's healthy is going to be a factor. Thomas is the bigger question mark, but the fact that you got Callaway, who's a real player as a four uh, and you have AK and you have Ingram as the backup. It's like, man, that I think it's set up for the quarterback and the new coordinator to, to do well. No, it is. It is. And it makes so much sense. It made so much sense for them to draft Chris Olave. He just looked like a saint to me just from the beginning just looked like, you know, just the skill set he brought would fit right in. They kind of had it with Deontay um, Hardy, Harris Hardy. Uh, but, you know, that's an undrafted guy. Not, you know, that's not to knock him, but just somebody with a little more smoothness to him that can, you know, really could take the top off, do some stuff in the intermediate. So I think that's just going to pay dividends. And he's, he's like a beast in the red zone. And I think that's where Jameis can really elevate uh, you know, really, really just elevate the whole team. But you brought up AK, and there's this kind of thing we just kind of waiting on to drop is his whole legal situation. Mm. I don't know. I mean, it could come next year. It could come this year. They haven't really addressed running back. They got like a bunch of UDFA guys and stuff like that. Um, that's the part that just kind of worries me. Like if, because the four, like the losing streak, the five game losing streak they had last year. That was the games Alvin Kamara missed, all five of those games. And <laughs> it, it just, like, torpedoed their whole offense because he was the only playmaker. Now, they do have playmakers, more playmakers this year, but he's just such a crucial role to, like, just everything they do. Oh, no doubt. I mean, I, I had kind of forgotten about his legal situation, to be honest. So that Everybody good, did. It's a, <laughs> the, Saints <laughs> did. the Saints did, too, obviously. Like, <laughs> it, it's a good reminder, but, it you know, pr- you got to figure between, like, Kamara – and Thomas, and then Landry, and then Alavi's a rookie. Like it's like one of those aren't gonna work out like you want. Yeah. Whether it's an injury, right, right. but I think they have the the type of depth that they could withstand it. AK is probably the most irreplaceable one, which is crazy. You wouldn't normally say that about a running back, but it's just true. the The bigger issue is like Trevor Penning is not the type of profile that that I like. Um, yeah. <laughs> you know, coming out of college, it felt like they forced that pick, but they were just going to take that tackle no matter what. No and, matter what, man. And you no were just, what. and I think their offensive line coaching has been so good over the years um, that you hope that continues. I know it's not changing that much, but you, you're adding, you're putting Marone in there and the, and Peyton's gone. Like normally you just assume they're going to figure it out. Even if they have, even when like they have injuries on the offensive line, they figure it out. So you just hope that that stays like a, like a real plus because if if suddenly the offensive line is an average is okay but if they're a negative then suddenly this this doesn't look nearly as promising no yeah yeah go ahead go ahead Ryan. no i was just saying last year was last year was probably first year under peyton where i i didn't have confidence in the offensive line but you know i mean they they dealt with so much i i'd never seen that many combinations of offensive linemen in one year, I'm sure other teams have done it, but I mean, it was just starting week one. Like at week one, uh, Eric McCoy went out, Ruiz got put in it, then you had to put somebody in it. It was just a mess from week one all the way to the end of the season. So, you know, but those things happen. It could happen again this season. And, you know, we've talked about on this podcast about Cesar Ruiz ad nauseum. How uh, you know they just need to get him out the lineup. Well, that's your corner. I mean, like you guys are the number one place on the internet for Caesar Ruiz <laughs> content. All my opinions about Caesar Ruiz come from you guys. That's just, you know. yeah, just, just trust us, Greg. You don't have to go nowhere else. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's so bad. Um, I know you're. I know, you know. We finally saw as close as the fully formed version of Marcus Davenport um, as we have last last season. Still waiting on first round pick Peyton Turner to, to show up and sh- show something. Um, and hopefully he does this year because Ryan and I believe that both Peyton Turner and Marcus Davenport really are the key to the Saints defense being truly elite. Like if they get 
production from both those players at a high level. Um, the rest of the defense, you know, should should be uh, a factor for the rest of the season. But getting away from the Saints a bit, uh, I really like talking to you about just what you found out when you're doing this exercise, just about just give me a team that just kind of their roster when they, when you did their projected starters, it surprised you whether it's a, a good way or, or, or negative way, any, any team. Mm. Uh, the Cardinals surprised me about how, like how sorry I thought they looked or how, how like p- potentially bad they looked. Mm. You know, I just, I think their defense is sort of you weird. Know, they, just yeah, like they're to, so mismatched pieces. It's, right. Yes. They took it when you take two off ball linebackers in the first round back to back. And I liked Zayvon Collins coming out. Loved him. Loved him. Partly because he he basically was like, man, I don't even know who to say. Uh, like Luke Keekley in his prime on steroids, the game he played against Tulane. I've never seen a linebacker destroy an opposing college football team like he destroyed Tulane. Uh, but him and Simmons. Man, he he couldn't even get on the field much last year, and Simmons it just hasn't been good. And then you got JJ JJ Watt coming back in a key spot. You don't really have any edge rushers, and then they've actually done a good job, at, you know, coaching up their secondary. I think Vance Joseph is a tough guy to prepare for, so I want to give them the benefit of the doubt. But on paper, it's like a bottom eight defense in terms of talent. And then you look over on the offensive side and. The offensive line's got questions for sure. You don't have Nuke for the first six games of the season, and there's just some weird, weird vibes, obviously, between uh, you know the coaching staff and Kyler, and it just just feels like it could go very wrong. And it, I was like, I kind of looked at this roster. I was like, man, how did they even win that many games last year? <laughs> Another one that stood out to me from your projected starters was uh, the Carolina Panthers. Do you, do you think Matt Corral is going to get in there pretty soon? I I still been thinking that's where Baker will end up just because I think oh it just logic to me logically they were ready to trade for him during the draft if the Browns were going to take on like most of his salary which mm. they didn't but it at least showed they would take him on and he's just so clearly better than Darnold and the way I do the projected starters, I do it on who I think would have the most snaps over the course of the season. So yeah. I just can't, I just can't see Sam Darnold playing that much football in the year 2022. So I just book corral for now. It's like, come on, what are we doing, man? Are we yeah. still playing this guy? <laughs> what are we doing? <laughs> um, you made a comment about the Broncos, not the, obviously I haven't listened to the episode you guys recorded today, but I think it was last Thursday. About it's them. a big projected starters day. We happen to hit projected starters there too. There we go. Okay. Um, that they have the biggest variance of any team in the league. And I honestly, like, I kind of see that. Um, so you said that last Thursday on around the, around the NFL podcast, what, what made you come to that? that conclusion about well, the Broncos having the most variance of any team in the NFL. Well, because other than their offensive line, that's like a, their roster is just loaded. You know, it's, it's right there with the best rosters in the league, but having your offensive line being the one like major question, man, that can just torpedo a team. So that's high variance. Then you got a new coaching staff. So we don't really know much about them. Um, not just hack it, but, but on defense too, it's a first time coordinator of Vero. Uh, but you just kind of look at, if you stack up the players, I, they have a pretty good argument for just like just sheer quantity. What team has the, the most amount of quality skill position players in the entire NFL, like pass catchers, running back, wide receivers, tight ends. I think you could argue Denver would be right there at the top. And then you ask who, what, what team has maybe the most, pass rushers guys who could push the pocket in the entire nfl just like quantity of guys not they're not all all pros but if you look at denver bradley chubb malik reed who i like randy gregory dj jones draymond jones they drafted this guy nick bonita who i happen to like in the draft um it's just like a lot of dudes who can get after the pass rusher and a great looking secondary too like they just got a lot on paper where it feels like they could go win the super bowl but it's also I got my I got a little doubts on Russell Wilson. It's a new staff. It's that offensive line. It just feels like 
they could they're in a tough division too like if things started like getting negative there you could just see i don't know you could just see them being seven and ten or you could see them winning the super bowl no i remember you were pretty early talking about russell wilson now you feel like well, maybe he got declining a little bit. I don't know. I don't know because, you know, you look at the last two years or one and a half years, however you want to look at it, you know, it just hadn't been, you know, something is wrong, you know, and obviously that could change. Uh, I kind of think he's going to bounce back, but. I kind of, I kind of do too, but just based on what he's done the last couple of years, I think even Seahawks fans would say like, he never really improved what he wasn't good at. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, it's true. And so if and when he starts losing that athleticism and some of the things he is good at, then, you know, what's left? I, I, the only question I would have, well, not the only question, but one of the bigger, big questions I have, you know, in just regards to the Broncos is, are we sure that Jerry Judy is good? Yeah, man. I'm sure. I don't know, man. <laughs> I don't know. Are we? Man, the way he moves, you just like I, I. But I'm just like in terms of like production he, since he's been in the league. I know he got injured last season, but like, are we sure that he's good? You know, based on his off-field stuff. No, it, <laughs> no, 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 no. But yeah. no, I'm ma- I'm making a real point, and I'm not trying to make light of it. But based okay. on his off-field stuff, it, it dovetails a little bit with what you've heard about him football-related too, which is was maturity. Um, and you know, that makes the biggest difference in a player's career, unless you're just like top 3% talented, you know? And so is he, that's a question, but I think when you just see the way he moves, the, the way he can catch the way he can go after the catch, the way he can get open his size, like, I, I don't have much questions. I'm still buying stock, like in his town, but it's fair. It's a fair thing to point out. He's only got what, um, 1,300 yards in, in two seasons. That's fair. Oh, okay. No, no, go ahead. I was just saying that that's all. That's all I was asking. <laughs> I was just going to say, of all the rookies, um, I didn't love Desmond Ritter, but I just got a feeling that he, of all the rookies, he might have one of the most successful seasons this year. I don't know why. I just think, I, I, I know he's going to start this year. I know it. He's going to start. And I just think just with the way he plays, he's going to have one of those seasons that looks good as a rookie. I don't think he's going to have a good career, but I think he's just going to have one of those good rookie seasons where he does some things defenses can't de- defenses don't prepare for. And, you know, he has a couple playmakers to throw to. I just I don't know. For some reason, I could, I could just see that happening. Yeah, look, if he if he's even decent, if he's like a passable starting quarterback, like maybe a little, a notch above the, where Zach Wilson and Lawrence were last year, who were the top two <laughs> picks in the draft. Um, look, he'll be one of the best third round rookie quarterbacks ever. Uh, you know, Russell Wilson probably has that lockdown forever, but yeah. th- there aren't, there aren't many who come in as a rookie and, and can play. And he was the guy I kind of convinced myself into that I that I sort of liked, and Adam didn't like that because uh, because I know he had accuracy issues, but he at least just looked like a guy that's going to be in the league a long time. And I like the fact yeah. that he he thought he was like uh, the next Ryan Tannehill, which is a weird thing to think uh, when you're a college player. <laughs> uh, and right. it's just it's just funny that Arthur Smith drafted him, though. It kind of gives me confidence that Arthur Smith will know what to if, do with him. You know, if I'm not mistaken, I think Cynthia Freeland's supercomputer projected him as like a Ryan Tannehill, too. That's weird. Right. And Ritter, Ritter, <laughs> Ritter literally compared himself in like it wasn't in, in front of the media. It was like it was reported like when teams were asking, who do you compare yourself to? Uh, but I can see it that I can yeah, see it can. like physically and the way he can throw the ball down the field. And, uh, um, and he can move. He can move, too. Like, But I think uh, if you're going to get a good Ritter, you're going to get a better processor than Tannehill was until like later oh. in his career. Tannehill was was not a guy who who made quick decisions for a while, even when he was playing well. Uh, no, no, he wasn't. I do think like Ritter's already ahead of where Tannehill is in terms of just reading like defenses and his decision making. I just his accuracy just as a I just can't. I don't know what to think about your uh, Falcons uh, rival. You know your rivals like on paper, 
they look pretty sorry. Um, but they did win seven games last year, and I kind of like give them credit for that. They yeah, like, it's hard. They, I don't know. Matt Ryan is Matt. Ryan, I mean, Saints fans gonna hate me for saying this, but he's a really good quarterback, man. Like even I know he's you know physically he's diminished a lot, but the dude is like Peyton Manning esque as a quarterback. You know what I'm saying? So I think he literally won them a lot of games last year. No, no, you're right. He had some high level games, but I, it was like I, I give them a little like Brian Flores first year in Miami credit of just like mm-hmm. squeezing a lot of wins out of a roster. I just didn't really see it. it. And so maybe they're in their second year, but like they're starting guys like, you know, I was struggling to, with some of it's like Taquan Graham is their starting <laughs> defensive tackle. They're going to get rid of Deion Jones. Yeah, they're going to start uh, Ebiketti, the guy they drafted. Their secondary is kind of interesting, A.J. Terrell and Casey Hayward, but their their offensive line doesn't look any better than it was, and it was it was pretty rough. And you got Drake London and Kyle Pitts. It's like, I don't want to judge off of, like, an interview, but, like, Drake London seems so soft-spoken. I, I... <laughs> It's like... <laughs> I was like, is he, really, he just seems so young. I was like, this guy really going to go play the NFL, man. I liked watching him on tape. Yeah, I liked him. Uh, <laughs> that's so funny. What, what team surprised, what team when you did this exercise that you were like most excited to watch when the season starts? Whether mm. you want to see their offense because they're so loaded or like their defense is like, oh shit, like I want to see this defense like play together like what team really stood for out stood out for you that way mm. well it's usually like the the different teams like the different quarterbacks like i have other answers for the surprise that it, i mean i always just want to watch the chargers so i mean with with justin herbert i mean in that defense i i want to see what they can do with Khalil Mack and Joseph Day and um, J.C. Jackson on the back end. It is a fun kind of like on paper interception heavy defense that could go from like a pretty bad defense to to really good in a hurry. There's they're the defense. It's a I I'm, I want to see the Packers defense how they look now. I think they're they're pretty loaded. And th- this is not the answer for the team I most want to see, but like maybe that I'm most surprised that I want to see, which is the Giants, which I'm just out of curiosity. <laughs> um, I just think Dable is an interesting coach, a really smart coach, and they've got kind of weird pieces, but they're not bad. Like Saquon, Galladay, I like Cladarius Tony, the way he moves, oh, Sterling, yeah. Sterling Shepard. Um, they drafted that dude, Wandell Robinson, which seemed like a crazy <laughs> pick. Um, and Sterling, I've always Sterling Shepard still in the league. Like, <laughs> does he even sign extensions? Like, I never just see yeah, him. He took a he took like a pay cut. Or, like, they gave yeah. him extension. He like had to take uh, a pay cut because he he's the longest tenured giant. Isn't that take, crazy? Absolutely, right? Uh, gotta be. But he's only been there like six years. He's not that old. <laughs> um, I I've I've maintained that if you if I I would like to see Daniel Jones in a healthy situation with the offensive line that protects him because people make so many excuses for like Darnold or, you know, other quarterbacks. And it's like Daniel Jones has had the worst situation possible. And at least like he's looked, he's had moments. He's done things where you're like, this guy can play a little bit. I'd like to see him in a, in a decent situation. He he gives me a little bit of Jameis vibes um, that he could have a little bit of a Jameis like career where, you know, he's, he's a bridge quarterback that isn't that bad. No, no, I can absolutely see that. I'm so, I'm excited to see the Jaguars, man. I want to. Oh yeah. That's a good one. Them that's with, a good like one. competent, just, you know, half competent coaching. I still kind of believe in Trevor Lawrence. Um, he, he just, he made some throws last year. That was like ice. I just, I, I just, I really need to. I guess they're my new Browns, where like I just need to see some kind of competence from that. Uh, no, I'm with you. I totally that that should have been the answer. And then the 49ers with Trey Lance to me, I, mm-hmm. I like. I can't wait to just see what that looks like. It, that's another guy. Everyone's just like assuming Trey Lance is going to be bad for, for some reason. Right. He's like Kyle Shanahan's his quarterback, man. He had um, Nick Mullins getting like record setting yards per attempt and stuff. I think like it'll be okay, guys. It, yeah, it, yeah, I think I think you'll figure something out. Yeah. Uh, 
I think you will too. But I will say that I like I I would think that some of like some of the buzz in terms of the trepidation of him maybe not being ready that maybe coming out of San Francisco is a little like if you're a 49ers fan that's a little that's quite concerning if he's not ready in year two I get it but like his numbers were kind of good even in those two games last year I mean the eye test it was up and down but he made some plays in that Houston game but he's still getting like kind of like I was saying with Daniel like He's the opposite of Dana Jones. He's stepping into a situation where he's got Debo and Ayuk and Kittle and Trent Williams in that running game and a pretty nasty looking defense on paper. It's like he he's stepping into a nice situation. Oh, it's it's, it's tailored made and, and and ready for him. When when doing this series, did you come across a couple of players? And, and this is a complete like off off the wall question. Like a couple of players, especially like veterans that who are a projected starter right now, but you potentially could see them being a quote unquote, like surprise cut or a cut mm. um, when training camp is nearing the end. Mm. I'm trying to think about off the top of my head. I don't know. I mentioned Deion Jones uh, earlier. I haven't gotten into my projected starter mode. I mean, my uh, cuts mode. I haven't, yeah. you know, I wouldn't project them as a starter if I thought they were, if, if I thought they were on the borderline um, like that, there are some veterans that, like I mentioned, Casey Hayward that just pop up and you're like, Oh, he's there. I kind of forgot that. <laughs> like, Oh, Morgan, Mo- Morgan Moses is the Ravens right tackle. Okay. Is there a tight end anywhere? Like a tight end. <laughs> are, what do you mean? Are there any tight ends? Tight end. <laughs> what you need some? The saints need a tight end like badly. Like, it's, like it is, it is a huge hole right now. I was just trying to figure, out. but they, they just have they haven't been like a load of tight ends coming in in a draft. Has it's anyone signed years. Jared Cook yet? You know, maybe you bring him. Bring back. him back, hey, baby. Bring him we've back. been beating that drum. We, I mean, I know Saints fans don't want to hear it, but he's gonna make more plays than Adam Troutman. It's funny, he, like he's because Gerald Everett took like signed with the Chargers, and I just I just wrote like, well, Did Jared Everett's one, like one year re- in Seattle. Yeah, like oh, Gerald okay. Everett's replacing Jared Cook as like. The uh, the tight end free agent that's gonna like lose you a couple like one or two games right at the end and drive <laughs> you crazy. It's like it's perfect. <laughs> yeah, I, it's the Saints desperately need a tight end. Like right now, obviously Taysom Hill would be it, but he's coming off a Liz Frank injury and he's not gonna I mean, play until. You can't make him a. He's not a starter. No. He, you know what if, that reminds me of, though? You were saying, like, looking for surprises. or This is a little different, but Hayden Hurst popped up to me as a as a nice signing I had sort of forgotten about with the Bengals. And and uh, I've always thought he was a little... He, he, he can be a good role player for them. And they were one of the teams. You asked for teams that I came out of this feeling, you know, better or worse about. I feel yeah. even better about the Bengals, man. I just, I just think that they're a better roster right now than when they finished. I like what they did. Uh, in the draft and everything else is just so rock solid in there. And they have that young continuity. Like, that's what I like. That's what I like about uh, if you're a team, you want youth and continuity is like kind of the yeah. magic, magic combination. No, I could, I could easily see them winning more games this year, but not make the Super Bowl, but just have like a better overall, you know, instead of the whole magical season thing, just be a good ass team and just beat people up, you know, Right. That's why, you know, the Browns I mentioned were uh, they would be one of those teams that I came out of here feeling real different about, too, because I just sort of kind of slept on that. This roster maybe isn't quite as good as everyone says their defensive tackle position is about as bad as any teams in the league. Right now, their starters are Jordan Elliott and Taven Bryan. Um, You know, I really like. O- Owusu Koromoa, they brought Clowney back like Garrett, that, that's all good, they have a couple cornerbacks, but then it gets real thin they they gave John Johnson from the Rams a ton of money and he did not work out last year, they don't they're a little thin in the secondary and that offensive line which is, you know, has this reputation as like dominant wasn't quite dominant last year, Conklin and Willis both had a little bit of disappointment on the at the tackle position, Wills it was a little down after a great rookie season. Conklin's always hurt. And then they're like number two wide receiver is Donovan Peoples Jones. It's like, 
you want to start that team with Jacoby Brissett for eight games? Like <laughs> you might be in a hole, you know, you might be in a little bit of a hole that, that, that even if Watson comes back this season that they can't get out of. That's a great point. It, you don't, you're not buying any of this weird, like illogical hoopla that the Browns could hold on to Baker and have him play if Watson gets suspended. Like, there's no feasible way that could actually happen, could it? No, that, there's no chance. I'm surprised people are even. <laughs> what are we talking about? What are we, what are we doing? <laughs> you can't do that. Like, no. maybe the. I wouldn't be surprised if the Browns are so backwards that like it's crossed their mind but i don't yeah like, <laughs> i don't think so like they they've talked about like you know i mentioned how they're, they're they're finishing so high in these gm rankings it's like they they're not do, like take your l with baker it's not happening you're not getting right. anything good what are, what are you doing here it's just like you're just you're just making every it, making everyone look worse you're not what are you going to get you're going to get a sixth round pick if you're lucky like it doesn't matter just just get rid of them no no it's crazy so how do you feel man like you like you guys have basically you know innovated the podcast game when you guys started what 2012 2013 mm-hmm. you know most people didn't know what a podcast was you know you just what's, what's a podcast <laughs> um now I, I think, you know, it's it's pretty much ingrained to the culture where, you know, most people know what a podcast is. Um, it's, I mean, there are podcasts that annihilate cable news shows, cable news networks as far as, like, ratings. Annihilate them. Like, it's really becoming, like, a just a new phenomenon, and it's different than radio. Um, so, I mean, how do you feel it's just like being kind of like an innovator? Because you are like you, you know, the whole 18 pod you guys are innovators, like some of the other shows, like, um, you know, heard and all those guys, they started out on radio, but you guys really just started from a podcast, you know, format uh, platform and just took it to a new level. Yeah, I appreciate that. Like, it's funny because I don't even think of us as that early in the podcast game, but we were we did time it well for it to explode because I was such a big podcast fan from day one. Basically, the second podcasts were invented, I was I was starting to listen to them, and I yeah. was down I was downloading them. You know, I was hooking up my wire to my MacBook before <laughs> I would go on the train in the morning yeah. every every day in New York to go up to Roto World or go up to NBC and downloading those you know Bill Simmons podcasts and stuff like that so that I could go listen to it on the way up. And like, I was always bugging my road world boss every day to start a podcast. He's like, Oh, there's no money in that. There's no money. in that." Mm. I, I remind him about this still I said, like, <laughs> we, we would add another, you know, I'd still be there probably, you know, we would, we would add a four year head start, but um, no, it's, it, it's a blessing and you're right. It's crazy. It's still taking a little while for like a corporation, like NFL network to sort of understand what you're talking about. But like, the advertising it's just like it's different because your audience actually cares what you say and so that's yeah that that can be very powerful um and lucrative and you're right on audience like that does not cross that cross you know that crosses my mind it's like like hey we got this tv show sometimes uh, the around the nfl tv show but like more people are going to listen to our podcast than watch our tv show and they're going to listen closer so if like you want to be heard like and more people are going to listen to our podcast than most of the shows on nfl network most of the shows that are getting like huge pushes um that's just the reality of the situation and so it's like people are are coming around to that and which is cool because i'm i'm still like a huge podcast listener i listen to a million of them um no you guys were were truly up to at the forefront and like, you're old timers, right? <laughs> you're like, like you're, you're an old timer in terms. This will of- be our 10th season um, podcasting wow. together. And it'll be my 20th season covering the NFL. So I am, I am an old timer now. Oh yeah. <laughs> without, <laughs> without question. Um, what regard regardless of your projected starter series, just what are some things as we as we close out here? What are some things that you're 
excited about this upcoming season. Looking mm. forward to um, just just in general. I'm excited for some time off. That's what I'm excited about. <laughs> no, that's not that. <laughs> Going to Japan uh, with the family. What? Yeah. Oh, this was up. Usually your wife goes, right? You just stay yeah, no, I. No, I usually go um, with them about half of it, and then so uh, oh. I'll be by myself for half. Uh, sometimes they would go in the winter, and then and then I, I'd have to miss that one. Um, but I know, like, it's that dead time of year, and I'm starting to watch some some quarterback tape and stuff just because I, I enjoy that. But I know the the juices will be flowing in in August. They'll be way too long because I'll want to get there. There, there's so much. Um, I don't know. Like the Eagles stand out. I'm always kind of an Eagles fan, but I always I, I'm yeah. really digging this Eagles team. I like teams that do things a little bit different and they're just going to be funky. And I think they'll be a lot of fun to watch. Eagles going to be watching the Saints, boy. The Saints, <laughs> if the Saints don't, you know, Saints stumble out 0-5 starting the season. It's, Buddy. They, get, they might get them a nice pick next year, so... I forgot that. Are they playing each other too, by the way? Yes, week 17. Oh, my God. That's the deal. Dennis Allen has not figured out how to stop Jalen Hurts no, in, that's, in that's two seasons. One, and one kryptonite. Like, can't you figure can't deal with it. That's what I mean. They're, they're going to be a tough team to prepare for. Like, with this projected starter series, they were one of those teams that, like, on both lines, they had about three backups that are better than a lot of team starters. And it's just like when you have that sort of depth on your lines, like, and that's how they, that's how they, they're the, one of the most analytically driven teams in the league. And that's sort of what their analytics department, I think tells them. You know what's that funny is that spend the money in the big, big fatties up front. Well, yeah, they, they draft them like the Eagles and the saints tend to draft the same type of way. They, you know, it's mm-hmm. all in the front seven, whether it's on defense, it's, it's either a defensive lineman. If it's on offense, it's a it's a tackle. Um, they're both built in the trenches. Um, the only big difference is the Saints, especially since Jeff Ireland's been hired, has devoted like a lot of resources into the secondary and the draft. Um, but most of the first round picks are de offensive linemen, and both teams are are built that way. And then I think like the Eagles have the luxury of if Jalen Hurts isn't the guy and I have tons of questions, if that's the case, they could still be a contender to a degree. And then they have the assets to get a, an actual quarterback that they want next season. Like that's a great position to be in <laughs> as a yeah. team. Yeah. They, they had a great last year between their draft and the free agents and the way that last season played out, making the yeah. playoffs um cuz they they really did what the what the hope is for almost all these teams like i don't believe in rebuilding in the nfl rebuilding just means you're sorry i don't think there is i don't think i don't think any team is trying to rebuild cuz you're going to get fired before that's over um yeah. so you got to just re figure it out on the fly set up the long term and the short term hopefully at the same time and fix that thing quickly or else you're gone. And they sort of did fix what I think was a tough situation coming out of Wentz quickly. And now, like you said, they're in a good spot and like, you know, it, like, I, yeah, they have, they have backup. They have about eight deep on the defensive line. That reminds me of that Super Bowl team. And they are a little better in the secondary. They got Slay, Bradbury and Avanti Maddox is kind of a nice one, two, three cornerback group. Oh man, you're right. It's, it's, uh, It'll be interesting. I'm, you know, this, you know, the the quiet season is coming up on the NFL. We got mini camps coming up uh, in mid June, um, and that'll be it. This is it's the qu- this like, is the quiet season. It. Don't don't yeah don't um don't fool yourself that any of this OTA mini camp stuff that you know you're reading about matters. We're gonna be doing podcasts about I don't know black holes or something like that. Make it more <laughs> I get Mark Sessler to... on to talk about UFOs or some shit. Oh, bro, we have a, a new show going to come on this week. We're going to talk about the Death Bird trial, bro. Oh, my God. I didn't even know this. Like... No, come on, man. <laughs> Why Maybe you I'll do this to me. <laughs> Maybe I'll listen because I, I haven't. Um... See? I, there you I've go. Completely, I've completely ignored it. I'm just like, I've what? completely ignored it. Life I, is too short to be, ignored, I have to be paying attention. 
So. I was just like, we've really become idiocracy, bro. I was like, when this, I mean, this was getting like five million views on YouTube, the live trial. I'm like, it's what wild. is going on? It was wild. And I had no idea. Like, I, I knew like the context of it in a very small degree, but I was like, we, we have nothing fucking else to talk about. Like, maybe we can educate, our, educate ourselves. Fucking podcast. I know. I, I, was, I was at work and we were doing the, we were doing that. I think it was the schedule release show and getting makeup and like the makeup ladies had some strong opinions about this trial. And I, I was not contributing Ooh. to the conversation. Was, was, it, was, was Liza part of one of them? Liza. Um, Liza, Liza Manella? <laughs> no, she, he's right. That is one of our makeup ladies. What are you even talking about? She follows us. She follows our Instagram account. Jeez. No, Liza's the best, but I, you just you kind of threw me off guard. I was like, wait, I, I don't want to be you know, putting her name out in the street. So she's, she's the best. She's great. Um, it, what, one question. I know you guys are going to Germany. Is there any way to get ATL to London again um, when I'm in London, when the Saints are taking on the Vikings? Yes or no? Good, good question. There was some buzz on um, talking about planning. I do think we're going to go to London this year. I actually think that's more of a lock than, than Germany. Um, but I don't know. I don't know what dates they're thinking. Or Oh, uh, yeah, because there's like multiple games, right? Yeah. I think there's... Three, there's three or four in London. Um, That's right. So I think there's four. So uh, I think we will be there. I will try to. What is the game? It's Saints who Vikings? It's Saints Vikings. Vikings. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that would be nice. Let's do also, that. Also, I, I, I figure that you, you won't be able to do it. Actually, I know you won't because it's the, the day before Halloween. But we are having a, a VIP Patreon get together um the weekend of the raiders game um a meet and greet all in new orleans we're having a big thing for all our mm. patreons um me and ryan are going to the game we're meeting it's going to be a pl- at least probably 20 plus of 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 our our patreons who have supported our podcast i'm extending the invitation out to you it will be in new orleans it will be a homecoming of sorts for you well i'm one of your patreons you guys should. I, that's climb. what i'm saying well, I know, but you're gonna fly me out like business class. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Do- no, no one's whoa, getting whoa. blown out, bro. <laughs> this is not, we don't have our JPP podcast money. Let's, <laughs> let's, let's take, take it down. Just trying to keep the lights on. <laughs> this <laughs> academy. Just <laughs> saying, like I got a, I got a rider now. I need some like Zaps potato chips. They're waiting for me. <laughs> you you can get some blue oak bar, <laughs> blue oak barbecue. Um, at the meet and greet party, I'm just spicy I'm, Cajun crotators, and you know, oh yeah, there you go. I'm just some saying a, the Im- invitation is there. <laughs> uh, and because because you are a patron yourself, you're gonna get a, a Saints Twitter coffee mug. I'm gonna send one your way, man. Oh, that's nice. That's good. Yeah, there you go. Uh, <laughs> but thank you as always for coming on, man. We'll have to get you on. At, I know it's hard during the season. I still have this ambition of getting both of you and Mark on at the same time. Um, but thank you for coming on. You're you, that this is like your fourth or fifth appearance now. Your your family, but uh, much much love to to you and congratulations for the deal that you secured um, in security. Um, follow Greg on Twitter at Greg Rosenthal. You can read his work, his projected starter series. What is I'm guessing the next like big thing that you're writing is going to be like the potential cuts. That's going to be like close to like training camp would be my guess. Yeah. I just had like a, a somewhat uncomfortable uh, conversation last week where I sort of was like, I'm not right until training camp. So uh, (laughs) (laughs) that's that's a, that's the first time that I've ever, uh, I was just like this projected starters is perfect. It's eight articles. Give me a break. Who else is writing eight? Um, and so do we, we can get someone else to do those mini camp, uh, takeaways, you know, we can get some, some else <laughs> so I'll God. see you, I'll see you in late July. You know, it's just around the corner. Cause I don't think people remember, like, you know, when the NFL news came out, you know, it was, it was you guys, like you clicked on a link about whatever was going on in the NFL. Yep. It was 
Greg Rosenthal, Mark Sessler, Dan Anzis, or Chris Wesley <laughs> writing the story. You know, maybe Kevin Patra. Between you know? between Roto World and then Pro Football Talk and then around the league, I was writing all day, you know, five days a week for yeah. like 13, 13 years. But yeah, those Ooh. days are over. Thank God. <laughs> Man, we living a life of luxury now. Well deserved life, <laughs> life of luxury. <laughs> but we appreciate you coming on, man. Uh, follow, give Greg a follow on Twitter. Uh, uh, thank you for my. I'm going to frame the tweet. By the way, you told me to frame. Home hundred percent, hundred percent framing it. Uh, but it was, it was just uh, so random. I mean, just I, read, I, it. I, read it. Read no it out idea. loud. I had no idea what he was talking about. I was like, "What are you talking about?" <laughs> You know, yeah, sometimes you go down, you go down YouTube rabbit hole sometimes and I watched a video on uh, Matthew Broderick and I was like, OK, you know, you know, seeing what his career, then him and Jennifer Grey dated like secretly <laughs> as they were filming Fairless Bueller's Day Off and they played siblings in the movie. And I was like, ew, like I know it's acting, but anyway. I, See I help, man. See <laughs> help. Tell Magic yeah, to seek help. <laughs> yeah, but man, it was I... just like it was just a random Sunday afternoon, and you were just tweeting about Matthew Broderick <laughs> and Jennifer Grey must have some weird sex. But I mean, I'm not even disagreeing. It's just like thank you. That's what I'm saying. The, the tweet made sense. It wasn't out of nowhere. But it anyway. was because I had to Google and find out this backstory about ah. them too to even understand it. But then you did it and you're like, ah, I got I got it. Right. <laughs> and they both seem a little oh, they're you know, a little off center. I mean, man killed two people and got I only had to pay a hundred and seventy five dollar fine. So I mean <laughs> just whatever. Anyway. Thank you for coming on, man. You're always welcome. We appreciate you. Uh, we're going to get out of here. We'll be back next week. With that, we're out. Peace. Denim is in demand at Plato's Closet in West Ashley and North Charleston. Get cash on the spot for everything denim. Bring in your trendy and classic styles of gently used name brand denim. Get paid for your denim shorts, skirts, jackets, jeans, and more. We're looking for denim that is blue, black, or a bold color. And jeans and styles like mom jeans, boot cut, baggy, flared, and ripped. We want everything denim. Sell your denim for cash at Plato's Closet today. Plato's Closet, located in West Ashley on Sam Rittenberg Boulevard and North Charleston on Rivers Avenue.